We're on a mission. We're going to find and uncover the smartest, most successful entrepreneurs on the planet, explore their highs, their lows, and how they ultimately mastered the game. I'm Martin Cook, and I'm excited to welcome you to the Smarter Destiny podcast. I'm grateful for you and your time. Now let's level up together. Ladies and gentlemen, a big warm welcome to the Smarter Destiny podcast, where today I am joined by my special guest, Ifat Cohen. She is coming from Austin. She is awesome. She has an amazing, if you're watching this on video, backdrop and, and looks like, like proper pro already. And that's a little hint about some of the stuff little nuggets that we're going to um, eke out today and and why this kind of professionalism is important, in case you didn't know. But if you aren't familiar with EFAT, you may uh, be interested to learn that she is an international speaker, a web host, an influencer, both types of influencer, which we're going to get into later on. She's an engagement marketer, and if you annoy her, she is a craft maga addict and knows how to inflict pain. So without further ado, EFAT, welcome. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> Look at that. So it only took a couple of takes to get through yeah. that. <laughs> so you're coming at us live from Austin, Texas, is that correct? Austin, Texas, yes. Where it has been rainy for the past summer. So it's been fantastic. What? what? And do you prefer the rain? I do, because I don't have to water my grass. It's fantastic. Okay. <laughs> Life hack. <laughs> awesome. Efficiency. <laughs> awesome. So um, it's been quite the opposite in the UK. It's really weird that our two, uh, two sort of, you know, very, very typically, uh, we're typically wet, you're typically dry and hot, and, and we seem to have You know, places. I think global warming is making uh, Texas tropical. So it'll Ooh, be very interesting. Texas tropical. Make Texas tropical again. <laughs> Could be a, a slogan that people might want to use. So <laughs> anyway, um, regular listeners and viewers of this um, this, this podcast will, will know kind of where we're going to start. And we spoke a little bit off air about it. Um, we love to just delve into the sort of point in time um, with our special guests where they um, perhaps went from uh, employed to entrepreneur or they, or they started a, a noteworthy venture that really kind of began to set the road ahead and um, I think you had a amazing start point for us that involved a startup or something like that do you should we start there yeah so um, when I came to the states I was just looking for you know different whatever jobs I can do um, and one of the jobs was a startup it was me the owner uh, who didn't really care about the startup so much because he had other sides of income and another guy who was kind of like the salesperson slash whatever else in a startup in me. <laughs> and I really felt like this was our thing, right? It's three of us. We're going to make this work. And I've done everything. I've done accounting, web design, customer support, um, everything that you can think about in terms of, you know, where the startup, whatever needed. Mm. And, um, and then the sales guy comes to me and says, Hey, you know what? You need to teach your, you know, parts of your job to all these other people, because if you get run over by a bus, we're screwed. So I do, and I trained 12 people, and I grew, helped grow the company, and I was fired. Um, I do, right? And at the beginning, I was like, I was hurt. I was like, I thought this was ours, right? And so then I go home, it was still, I was still in college. I went and I did a semester abroad, came back, graduated, and I was like, you know what? I built a company. I'm never going to work for anyone again because I know what it takes to build a company, right? So I'm only going to do this for myself. And here I started my network marketing days. <laughs> if you want to alienate everybody else, go into an MLM, right? <laughs> right. So we're going to go into that into into a second. So this startup that you that you started at, so so it grew from three people to to twelve or fifteen or so. What what uh, what uh, space was this startup in? So we was in a B2B and uh, we were basically replacing phones for people. So if a company would buy a phone for their employees and something went bad with the phone, our company will take it and just load everything on the phone and replace it in like, I think, 24 hours or something like that. So that an executive didn't have to go like, OK, I need all my contacts, I need all my appointments, I need all my stuff. OK. Um, and, and these are like cell cellular phones type thing. So, yeah, not, yeah, not super interesting startup. <laughs> Not super interesting, but you 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 got in there. You you sunk your teeth into the challenge, and um, sounds like almost single handedly grew it um, to the yeah. point where um, 
uh, your boss made a terrible decision, but maybe a great decision for us. Do you know because, what's funny? Go on, tell me. <laughs> what's funny, uh, two years later, I'm in a networking event and I find a guy who fired me and he comes back and is like, hey, are you hiring? <laughs> Oh, nope, wow. Not. Yeah, no, we're not. <laughs> I was like, no. Nope. Uh, unless you want a short-term <laughs> position, which will end badly for you. Yeah. yeah. That sort of thing. Okay. <laughs> and so and so now, so you've gone, right, I'm, 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 I'm done. I, I want, I want to have that, that's that control, um, over, over my own destiny. And now you're in the MLM space. So, yes. um, so multi-level marketing is, um, uh, for anybody that isn't familiar with the acronym and, um, we're not going to mention Herbalife or anything like that, are we? We're the sort of classic. <laughs> no, MLMs. this this was an amazing product. Seriously, Come. I fell in love with the product. Uh, it was a fuel reformulator, and um, you would put it in your tank, and it will give you more mileage, and it will completely clean the car. So no emissions, nothing. Turn the car into like a supercar. Wow. Uh, we loved it so much. I brought it to Israel. We opened like a branch over there. Um, bought stocks in the company and all that stuff. And, um, and I hate selling. I hate mm-hmm. trying to convince people to be like, look, dude, this is really good for you. Try it. Yeah. Um, so what I did instead, I built a website and everybody thought my website was the company's website and they'll just order product from there. And I was like, great, fantastic. I don't need to, mm-hmm. you know, worry about that. Um, so then <laughs> two years into it, the owner decided to flip the product instead of a fuel reformulator. Now we're selling Viagra. Oh, that's what? different. <laughs> so less about so, giving the car an erection and now it's actually, there's just no car. Okay. Right. And I'm like, <laughs> how? So again, I said, I will not work for anyone again. And here I find <laughs> myself working for someone else in a different format. Right. Um, so that sucked. Um, and the company crumbled and we we're like, we're not selling Viagra. Um, <laughs> and so then Google Plus came out in beta and I was one of the 100 people to um, be invited to test it out. And I found my tribe. All of a sudden, it's me and other geeks just kind of like, hey, what happens when I block you? What happens when I, you know, when I do this, when I do that? And we were just geeking out. And there are no gurus. There's like nobody's an expert. Nobody knows anything. We're just trying to figure things out on our own. Um, and it, I found my tribe. So now we're geeking out together, really. And so everybody's sharing what we're finding. Okay, yeah, so, yeah. so how do you say, you say, I just found myself in the 100 people selected by Google. How did that happen? So Google, I think what happened is Google sent an email to, I don't know, how, however many people. And a few of them, myself included, were like, okay, let's, you know, let's do this. Uh, I think other people came in and were like, oh, there's nothing there yet. So they just left and never thought about this again. Um, but me, I, I fell in love with the platform because there's, I, I was on Facebook at the beginning, right? College. It was mostly for college people. And, you know, you share your heart and your soul. And I think so many people who are watching this right now probably have the same experience, right? You share your deepest thoughts on there. And then it's like cricket, cricket. Your mother gives you a like, <laughs> you, you know, <laughs> Thanks, mom. Right? and you, yeah. And you yeah. see everybody else kind of like, oh, why are they having conversations? They're not. They're feeling exactly the same way that you do. But you catch that one thing that they do get some action on. And everybody's just feeling depressed, like nothing is happening. And Facebook was not supposed to be at that time just a tool for people to hook up. Right. It wasn't mm. a social platform when it started. So Google Plus was different. All of a sudden it's like, wow, I'm talking to people about the same stuff that we're interested in. We're all geeks. We're all trying to figure this out. We're all kind of like playing with the platform in like just eight hours a day, you know, blah, 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 blah. Um, and then Google comes out with Hangouts. I don't know if you're familiar, oh, yeah. familiar with Hangouts. Mm-hmm. And that was amazing because first I was, everybody's I'm embarrassed to be on camera. Today it's like, it's natural. But then I was like, I was a black man. You know the, <laughs> you know those cartoonish <laughs> things right? that you uh, had the camera kind of talk to you, for you? Um, Do you know those? <laughs> no, I don't. You might need to add some context to, to why you are a black man on this. So one. there's there's filters. Back then there were filters on cameras that you could buy and it will be uh, an animation or like a, a drawing or something like you could be a shark, you could be a dog, you could be, you know, a cartoon woman. I was a cartoon black man. OK. And so, really so it was your black. voice. And uh, but the actual what was shown on camera was. But really, uh, was you the, know, like, uh, yeah. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Like a cartoon. Because I was really, yeah, yeah. Well, it fits me, right? I'm black on the inside. I always <laughs> say that. <laughs> In the summer, it comes out a little bit. Okay. Um, but, but everybody was embarrassed to be on camera. 
right? So mm. we're all kind of like, uh, but it was the next step, right? So you moved from text and everybody's commenting and posting and chatting to actually talking with each other, camera off, camera on, filters and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Google came out with Hangouts on Air um, and I was one of the first ones to get access to it. And, um, and that actually came because of the community. So I built a really good community on Google+. And I think everybody can do that anywhere when you just surround yourself with like-minded people <clears throat> where all of you are really, really passionate about the same thing. So if you are passionate about cricket, <laughs> right, am. and you can talk about <laughs> cricket <laughs> until the cows come home. I can. Right? And now, so, right? And <laughs> so how time will fly when you're around like five people who okay, care about the same thing, right? The challenge is most of us are in these big, huge networks, and we're not surrounded by people who care about the same thing as much as we do. Um, and so it kind of feels lonely. Hmm. So, and so what, was what was your topic? What was your, what was your chosen topic that you uh, built your your tribe? In around? Google Plus, I was the G Plus go to gal, <laughs> so ah. I was the one kind of like decipher. That's my little Trinity avatar. Um, you guys don't see it; you'll see it in the video. There's a little avatar on me, um, <laughs> and she was Trinity because Google came out to be kind of like the Matrix. If you didn't experience it, you're like, ugh, they're trying to be Facebook. They were not, but mm. you wouldn't know. Um, so I was that person that goes like, Google, 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 <laughs> and so much so that Google, uh, you know, kind of like spotted me and then hired me to talk to their employees about hangouts and communities. And they fly me around the world to talk about that stuff. And I'm sorry, something's wrong with my throat today. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> um, and so then I work with the city of Austin. I uh, got invited to radio shows and speak on stages and everything just from one show and one platform that most people don't care about. Wow. And the, uh, yeah, right? I was like, this is actually working. And I, you know, and this is the thing. I think Gary V says exactly the same thing. When you're just really, really passionate about something and you take your time and you dive deep into it, you know, stuff happens. Brand is being built. You're talking about the same thing over and over again. People start hearing you. Mm. And now it's kind of like, I just lost my podcast. How come I don't have a million downloads, right? Like we want it very quickly and we don't take the time to build a relationship, to, uh, to engage in all that stuff. So back then there was nothing to sell because nobody wanted to know anything. So we were just geeking out on the platform. Um, and then people were seeing me doing that and they're like, hey, can I pay you to teach me? And I'm like, really, why? <laughs> I mean, this is easy. <laughs> I'm telling you how to do this. You just yeah. go, you know, do it. And they're like, no, 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 I'll, you know, I'll pay you to teach me and, and I'll charge other people to, sh- to see how you teach me. Um, and so what so sort of, um, what sort of skills do you feel like you were accidentally learning during, uh, during this period? Because obviously you had a tremendous amount of success and you, you've built up this community. Um, what sort of things were you learning that you, you believe were the, the perhaps uh, lesser known secrets to your, to your success at that point? So I'll tell you, it's engagement. Um, There was one moment in time that I'm very proud of where Gary Vaynerchuk and Guy Kawasaki were having a shared hangout show at the same time I was having mine. So I'm like, hey, come on, you know, they probably took some of my audience, Gary V, right? 60, I think they have 15 million followers on all platform at that time. I just had like 60, 60, 60,000. And I had four times the views, the shares, the comments, the engagement that they did. And I was like, wow, this one moment in time where this little Jewish girl crushed Gary Vaynerchuk, right? <laughs> <laughs> but it happened because Gary and Guy were just talking at people. They were doing a show, but it was just them talking to each other. There was no real engagement. Uh, whereas mine, you come in and you actually speak with the guest face to face. So the, the audience becomes active in participate, you know, participating in the conversation. And now they're a part of it. They're not just passive viewers. And so you get more engagement, you get more shares, you get more opinions, you get more time spent with you. And isn't that the one thing that we all want, right? Some people to take action and to be interested in what we're talking about just as much as we're interested in what we're talking about. So that's, I think, my superpower is um, getting people engaged and actually moving them towards taking action. Nice. Okay. So I definitely want to um, deep dive into that um, uh, in a second. And so, okay. So at this point, right. So to, to summarize where we are at, um, at this point in time, um, you're, 
you're uh, an influencer on Google Plus. You're you're geeking out um, on the daily about Google Plus, and you've got you've got a following of people that that want to presumably learn a little bit more about the platform. Google's loving you and flying you all over the world, and um, and um, and trying to uh, um, concentrate your passion towards people that they want to be more passionate about Google Plus, and um, and now we're where we are now and you said off air that um google plus ceased um ceased being in april this year and so can we can we talk a little bit about this sort of gap here and how and how this progressed um for, yeah, from this point? So, yeah so i'm right i'm really big on engagement and i'm like guys the reason why you are not making any sales is not because your copy sucks or people don't trust you or um you don't know what you're talking about or your landing page doesn't convert the reason I still feel it's the same, the reason why people don't buy from you is not because you're doing anything wrong, it's because they've tried so many ways. They tried the free, they tried the $29, they tried the 57, the 297 maybe, and none of those products are aimed to actually give them the results, right? They're only aimed to get them to the next purchase level. Right. And so they tried so many things and now they go like, look, I, I suck. You obviously are fantastic because you're making sales. Like I'm seeing you all your all the smoke and mirrors you're putting out there, right? But I cannot do this because I've tried and it's not working for me. So why would I buy your two thousand dollar thing? I'm a I'm a loser. Okay. And and so, so, sister, sorry. Yeah. So just so the thing that so here we've we've graduated. So we've got people asking to buy your services, and now you're you're talking about the services that you're offering, which is teaching Google Plus. Is is this? Is this the, so, the kind of right? So okay. um, they're um, they want to learn how to do Google Plus, but I'm like, it's not really the Google Plus that we're teaching. It's how to engage with people. Google gotcha. Plus is just a platform, right? It's just a tool. Yeah. You can engage in wherever you want. Mm. Um, so I meet this guy at a conference, and he uh, has a boss uh, who's the guy who invented the video sales letter. And he goes like, Hey, you have to meet, you know, you have to meet this girl. <laughs> She's fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, let's work with her. And at the time that guy was going through some stuff, you know, I'm in Malibu, we drive to his house. He doesn't have the time to meet me. We turn around, <laughs> we <laughs> drive back home, we don't meet him. Um, and then, t uh, I don't know, a few weeks later, he's like, okay, let's do this. Um, so what we did, we did 10 days uh, of, we called it a hangout a thon, because it was hangouts. Mm -hmm. And he's like, you, you, you teach me, I'll follow. And I'm like, okay, five first days, we're not selling anything. We're just giving value. We're just engaging. The other five days, we'll be selling. Now, this guy is a marketer. Mm -hmm. And so it was extremely hard for him not to sell anything. <laughs> um, but we, we start going live. So we are promoting his software. It's a $2,500 software um, to his list, just his list, 7,000 people that were hit with the same offer and never bought. And in 10 days, we make about $250,000. Wow. And the reason why is because in those five days, we give them a little win, right? It's like, look, you can do this. You've been following me forever, but you know, here you, you're able and it kind of builds on itself. Right. And within 10 days, they're like, holy crap, I can, do, if I can do this, what else can I do? Right. So we turned that into um, a system and, and I was like, is that because that guy is so awesome? <laughs> or is it because the system, the 10 days is actually working? Mm. So that's what I started selling and started testing it with other people. And it was fantastic. People making $100,000, selling $15,000 packages to cold traffic. It was great. Um, the only problem is I can't scale this because it's just me helping them host that. Yeah. And I'll, okay, right? So what am I going to do? So I'll create, um, I'll create a course, right, to teach them how to do this. I'll get like a high ticket course and everybody will love it. It'll be great. Um, it's not. I have one client. <laughs> <laughs> she goes through the course, she makes a hundred thousand uh, dollars. and she goes like, dude, I would have paid you to do this for me. It's too much work. I'm overwhelmed. It's like so much. And I'm like, okay, so let's me create an agency where I'll do everything for you. Um, and that's where we are now. We just switched to an agency model in the last two months. Um, and really what we do is like, we provide that type of hands-off engagement for our clients. So they just show up we manage the entire show, um, and then we take that, we repurpose it to all your social media assets, we distribute it, and then you're seen everywhere, you're engaging, we're building your assets, and all that jazz. Oh. So 
So who is your who is your uh, client right now? What, who's your typical client, and what and what do they sell, and at what level currently? So my typical client is someone who uh, values time more than money. They already have the money. They just don't have the time. They don't want to manage it. They don't want to do anything with it. Um, and that might be SaaS owners, coaches, consultants, um, anyone who's selling high ticket items. I had an uh, autoimmune disease doctor, <laughs> and the whole thing. I had software, um, public speakers, anyone who needs visibility and reach, but has a high ticket item that requires high touch, um, high trust. Trust is really big. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they're like, well, I'm traveling all over. I don't want to. I don't want to mess with this social media thing or I'm tired of funnels or, you know, I actually want to talk to people and build trust right away. Uh, there are clients. Nice. And so um, in terms of so, so these people presumably already have audiences or, or some of them do. You know, you'll be very surprised more than that. How many people seem like a million dollars? Right. But when you dig into the numbers and everything else, there's nothing under the hood. Um, so I've worked with people who claim to have, you know, I have a 40,000 people list. Yeah, but nobody on that list cares about you. They don't open, they don't click. <laughs> so it doesn't really matter if they have a big audience, it's preferred, uh, mm. but we can also help them build the audience. Uh, it will take a little longer, but we can do that. Okay, so, um, and so you, obviously you're, you're an influencer in your own right. You've already got, um, you know, large followings and so on. Are you, are you um, utilizing those followings to help uh, your clients grow as well? Or is this completely independent? Um, it's their thing. So uh, I have my own show. I'm That Geek Show. We go live twice a month, or every Thursday at 1 p.m., shameless plug. Um, and my guests get to tap into my audience when we do that. So they kind of experience what it's like to work with me as a client, as a guest. Um, we have amazing results with that. Like one, uh, one guest, she was teaching LinkedIn. She launched a five-day challenge from our one-hour show. She got about 45 people opting in. Uh, not her stuff, right? So that's great. Other people made sales directly from the show. Um, so that's kind of like showing them how they can tap into other people's audiences uh, while being guests on other people's show. But when we do it as for them as clients, we tap into their guests database, if you will. Does that make sense? Yeah, that, that does. Um, uh, I like it. And so typically, um, let's let's uh, touch on this a little bit more. So is it is it um, is it now the the system that you described the the, the five days value five days selling is that is that um, still the way um, that you you tend to work with the clients or is that evolved a little bit or does it vary? What does that look like? I love your questions. Um, yeah, so those ten days are kind of like a quick hit, right? It's kind of like okay, I need money right away, and we do that. A lot of people, um, because it requires a lot of time and attention, it's not cheap. So a lot of people are kind of like, eh, you know, not really wanting to do that. So the agency, what we do is we create your own live TV show, if you will, on the web. Uh, You have your own studio, which is what we provide. You can see my settings, but we can lay anything on top of your, on your video. We're building you a web platform um, and we're getting you seen everywhere. So you'll be live on Facebook, you'll be live on Twitter, on YouTube, on LinkedIn, everywhere. But in order for people to engage with you, which is the magic, they have to come to your website. In there, you have your call to action, your SEO, your social proof, everything is is yours. So what happened with Google Plus, right? I was big on Google Plus, I'm like the G plus go to gal, I'm the first organic result before Google when you search for uh, for Google Plus. And then in April, they're like, you know what? We don't feel like doing this anymore, <laughs> right? <laughs> and there go like 90,000 followers, seven years of content, everything just like, whew disappears. And so I'm like, right now, don't build your home on rented properties. We all think that, you know, Facebook groups, that's my group. No, it's not. We had so many people locked out of their own groups before, Mm. right? Mm. Um, LinkedIn followers, they're really not yours. If you don't have an email of someone, you can't contact them outside the platform. It's not really yours. So what we do is we, we do leverage social media because you want to be seen everywhere, but we want to make sure that you own your audience. So Facebook is down, fine, I'll be on YouTube. YouTube is done, fine, I'll be on <laughs> wherever, right? But I own your, I own my audience and I can communicate with them regardless of who wakes up on the wrong side of the bed and decide that the platform is not working anymore. I like that, I like that. And so um, what's, what's your favorite platform at the moment? What are you liking at the moment? That's a tough one because I used to be uh, really anti-Facebook. 
um, and I find more relationship there now. I think it really depends on where you invest your time, right? So if you invest your time in LinkedIn and you're going to have conversations and messages there, that's going to be your favorite. If you're investing it in Twitter, you probably have great conversations on Twitter. Um, I'm personally building my own community, so that's probably going to become my, <laughs> my favorite place to hang out. Nice. And so uh, let's talk about your community for a little bit. So um, your community is, is, so is this still I'm.geek? I'm that geek.com. I'm, yes. I'm dot geek dot com. And um, what what uh, your your community and you like? What what is it that you you guys are sharing with each other and engaging around? What is there a central topic um, in your community, or how does what's that look like? So my I'm that geek show. Every other week, we bring in thought leaders. Um, that are breaking down step-by-step step different topics. So we have topics about viral videos, for example, and then LinkedIn, specifically how to go ahead and improve your profile, uh, how to become a better speaker, how to uh, convert better, how to do emails. And what I realize is that people are taking the time out of their day, they're showing up, they're asking questions, uh, they get so much out of it, and then nothing, you know, myself included. We just like, oh, that was great, I will do that. And then we never do. And so what happens in the community, you choose a topic that you want to focus on. Let's say you really want to improve your LinkedIn game. So in the next four weeks, that's going to be your challenge. You're going to be connected with other people that want to do exactly the same thing. You already have everything you need from that expert. Oops, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I did not mute my thing. Let me mute my... I apologize. We can start again. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> to my next meeting. Um, so you choose the, do you want that? Because then you're going to cut it. Was I like in the middle? No, no, that, that's what cool. Um, um, so, um, yeah, just go from, you know, you, so you can choose the topic. Because <laughs> I, I, yeah, I edit videos too and I'm like, fudge, where was that? Um, <laughs> so you choose that challenge that you want to embark on for the next four weeks. Say it's LinkedIn. And then you're connected with other people live in real time, not just in text. You'll jump on Zoom and you'll actually walk and work with them in a mastermind kind of thing, for example. Mm -hmm. And for four weeks, you're actually going to master LinkedIn. And then four weeks later, if you want to do video, you're going to find a group, we'll connect you and engage with you. And we'll put you together with like-minded people who are passionate about exactly the same thing you are. And together, you're going to master one topic at a time so that by the end of the year, you've actually done something and you're not like, oh, I should have, would have, could have, if only... Right. So the idea is to take business owners and entrepreneurs and connect them with like minded people to actually take action and, you know, improve their business and move forward. Fantastic. And so where do you find the uh, the, the experts that you bring in? You know, it's probably the same way that you're finding guests for your podcast. Uh, some of them are referrals and some of them are you just reach out. You're like, wow, you're amazing. I would love to share you with my audience. And they're like, yeah, sure. How much? And I'm like, right now it's free. Jump on. <laughs> How much they're asking? How much do they how need to pay you? How much it will cost to be on your program? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And Which like, actually, you know what? I'm I'm starting to think of charging people for it um, because we're doing so much marketing and promotion before and after and repurposing. So you end up with like two weeks of content around your one interview. Mm. Um, and some people are using it. Some people are using it. With, um, they're actually taking the interview and they're turning it into their sales funnel. Um, they're cutting it up and, you know, they're featuring themselves as the experts. And like, nice. well, if we're creating that much, why not, you know, make it a little bit more valuable? <laughs> definitely, definitely something to, to explore there. And so, um, wow. So, okay. So we're going to, we're going to, um, figure out where we are right now. So, so you're, you, you've got your, your influence. Now, what, what are you talking about on your, um, on the channels that, that you own? Is it, uh, yeah, what, what are you talking about in the channels you own? What am I talking about in social? Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of the time I was talking about my guests and, uh, you know, the lesson we learn and what we're sharing. And this might be very helpful for your audience. I'm a very positive person. So I always talk about like, you know, the amazing things that are happening. And look, we get only like 2.95 bounce rate. How awesome is that? Um, but both my coach and my advisor said, you know, you're too positive. Positive doesn't sell, pain points sell, right? Mm. So you have to start focusing on the pain points. Um, so now we are, we're gonna start talking about like how lonely it is to be an entrepreneur, you know, the psychological uh, effects of fake it till you make it. Cause all of us are like, you know, we have the ups and downs, but you don't see that online. No. Um, 
right? Social isolation. You know, more people are dying from social isolations than anything else. Young people are killing themselves. Wow. Um, 50% of Americans, 50% say that they feel lonely. I'm like, so we're more connected than ever, but we're craving connection. Yeah. Right? So so where where can we find a place to connect? And the challenge is, is that there isn't really. If you're an entrepreneur who works from home online, Facebook groups are not really the place for you to connect because it's a fan club, right? You're <laughs> you're only there for the person who started the group and you can't say anything or they're gonna kick you out. So it's not really a place. Uh, same thing with LinkedIn, everybody's advertising. Um, Twitter, it's not really a connection place. It's in 140 characters, how are you gonna connect? <laughs> um, so, and, and Instagram, it's just like liking it. So there's no real place for us to kind of like come together. Mm. Google Plus used to be that place and then they killed it. Um, so we're creating that place. And my dream really is that each, each thought leader will create that place for their own audience. Because if you're really passionate about cricket, all you need is like, you know, here are cricket fans, here's your home, come blab about it as much as you want, you know? Another interesting thing, John Lee Dumas, you know John Lee Dumas, right? Fire, uh, entrepreneur on fire, podcaster? Oh yes. Yeah. He shares his um, uh, profit report, monthly profit reports, like they, how much they make from everything, and he breaks it down. It's very transparent. Mm. Most of the money that he makes is from affiliate products. So he shares free courses. He's like, here is my course for free, and here are all the services that I recommend. And when people click that and purchase it, that's the majority of his money. So he makes, last month he made $180,000 just from affiliate products. Wow. And so that's, Kind of, right? You don't have to be an expert. <laughs> you don't have to create anything, right? You just need to f create something valuable to people to help them out and then show them where to get it. That's it. But people don't know this, right? And to get started, it's hard. And how do you, how, blah, blah, blah. so that's where, that's where I'm that geek community comes in. It's a place for you to really connect with people face to face on zoom in real time and have some friends for the journey because it's, really sucks. <laughs> it, can, it can suck out there. It doesn't always suck, but it, it could suck. <laughs> and so, and so we, so you've got your own, your own community, um, around these, these different topics that people can learn. And, and do they, do they enroll once and then they can, they can take whatever four week challenge or is each four week <laughs> challenge, um, do they sign up for a challenge and pay for, for that challenge each time or like how, how does that look? Oh, it's a monthly fee and right now it's super cheap. So anyone who wants in, come in and get locked. It's like $37 a month. It's nothing. Nice. Um, yeah. And, um, um, and then you choose whatever. So if you wanted to just come in and do this challenge this month and quit. Okay. Uh, if you want to continue, then just keep paying $37 a month. Hopefully you love us and you stay for life, but who knows, it you is. know, <laughs> we're not for everybody. I like it. And so, so you've, you've got your own community and then you're also doing, um, the, the, the consultation, uh, the consultancy, uh, stuff for the, for the other, um, brand right. owners or product owners that people are looking to sell. Nice. Yeah. So we have the community for the, those who are just starting out and then for those who are already started and now have more money than time. Uh, we come and we help them get more time, uh, get everything done um, in two hours a month, actually, for themselves. So they spend two hours, they go live, they are Oprah, if you will, uh, or Joe Rogan, who depends on who you like better. Um, so they're showing up live, they're doing their show, and then we take that and we turn it into all the assets that they need. Fantastic. And so how many people have you got in your team on that side of the business? Um, what does your team look like? Uh, right now it's very small. So I have a few people in the States, some in Europe, uh, some in Pakistan out of all places. <laughs> and it's kind of like, it's very flexible. So you can grow and scale depending on what we need. So it's very lean. Um, I think we're about six people right now. Like that. Yeah. Like lean, but powerful. Love it. Yeah. You know, what's really interesting is like one of the things that occurred to me is you know, I only wanted to sell cupcakes, right? People start with like, I just love this thing so much. I just want to sell cupcakes. But now I have to have, you know, a website and a marketing budget and accounting and all that stuff. But all I wanted to do is sell cupcakes, <laughs> <laughs> right? So there's so many things that we don't even think that we'll need as business owners. And especially when you start hiring people, it's like fudge. Now I need to figure out access. I need to figure out monitoring and encouragement and leadership and all these other things that like, have nothing to do with what your 
teaching really what your business yeah. is about. Absolutely, and and you know, the, uh, it's very much the same. Like, take e-commerce as a as a an industry, for example. Um, you get into e-commerce, and you think, wow, I've, you know, I just need my product and my audience. And then suddenly, yeah. you find yourself kept um, kept up at late at night because um, I don't know your your customer service are um, aren't motivating. So you're looking up how to motivate outsource customer service teams, or or um, your your product's been held by customs. So you're you're <laughs> trying to find phone numbers for people to call and be like, hey, what, what the hell? Like, release my at least I think, or uh, you, you, you know, you're delving in, and PayPal's held your money, or like all of these different fires, and actually, you find yourself like it's almost like you're, you're not fires, pl- spinning plates, right? And you're you're yeah. trying to keep all these spinning plates going, and then one plate catches on fire, and you know, there's the fire, and then yeah, absolutely, and and you're like, I just wanted to sell cupcakes on my e-commerce store, <laughs> um, but uh, you know, that is obviously that is the life that um, entrepreneurs take on, and um, the good thing is you can't be fired from it um you know yeah but you can uh, like, you know you can lose your house <laughs> like. <laughs> yeah, yeah you can yeah it's, it's encouraged to gamble your house if you are there no, i'm kidding i'm kidding i'm totally kidding um but uh but yeah certainly certainly if you want uh, an exciting life what i say is uh, the entrepreneurial life that the, the highs are very very high and the lows um can get very very low but as you go through it the highs keep keep going high but the lows aren't as low as you as you build in the buffers the coping mechanisms and so on um, um, to, to, to sort of deal with it. And, um, whereas, you know, the, the, the nine to five is very, very, very consistent. Typically it's, you know, yeah. th- there aren't very high highs. There aren't very, very low lows. Um, and obviously everybody no, can, can choose the, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but then you can be fired and then there's a lie. But, uh, all right. So, um, at, the, at this stage, we're gonna we're gonna change pace. We're gonna jump into the quick fire question round. I ask the questions quickly. Uh, you can take as long as you want. Um, and as usual, as in true smarter destiny style, uh, you haven't been like I, I gave you a little glimpse of the questions just before we went on air. But you have not had time to prepare for this, and we like that. We like spontaneous. We like hotspot. Um, and so, without further ado, in fact, are there any unusual things you eat or drink regularly, and why? Uh, yes. Um, this is kind of like, you know, it's, it's an, uh, internet marketing kind of thing. So actually let me tell you something else. Okay. This, do you know this brand? Uh, I think I tried, did they have, did they have another one? Um, so, yeah. so, um, if that's holding up a can, which says immunity aid on it. Uh, so okay. they have fit aid and life aid and stuff like that. And this one is the defend one, but they are fantastic. Okay. Um, so it's like drinking soda, but like this one has echinacea, vitamin A, C, and D, turmeric, magnesium, asparagus root, valerian root, ginger. You're like, hey, nice. I'm getting all my vitamins in a soda. Oh. Um, so that has been <laughs> my new drink. addiction. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you're doing that. And, and what about, um, is there anything you, that you uh, eat uh, regularly that's a little bit unusual? I feel like there is. I feel like you're like, I know there is something, but I don't want to say it live. Uh, you no, know, I just, uh, <laughs> some Israeli, right? So pita, hummus, tabbouleh, like all the Israeli stuff I make in, uh, in the States. Is there anything I eat regularly? Um, that is unusual. I don't think there is. I started yeah, eating oatmal, but no. Uh, no. I'd say our meal's fairly, fairly. Yeah, that's usual. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, right, but no, but, no, but there's certainly not, the drink, yeah. and hummus is awesome. I, everyone loves hummus. Hum, right, and yeah. you know, I Go sent hummus. my hair to be tested for all the, you know, sensitivities and stuff, and they're like, you're allergic to hummus, garbanzo beans, <laughs> and white flour, and I'm like, there goes my pita and my hummus. I'm like, oh. you know what? I don't think this test is accurate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, your scientific test is no, I no. I, no, think, it's not. <laughs> I think yeah. hummus is still fine. <laughs> My, um, I, I did that as well. Actually, I recommend everybody get um, a food intolerance test. It's absolutely fantastic. And it's a really, really quick way and quite an, quite an affordable way to actually um, improve your quality of life very, very quickly by understanding the sort of kryptonites that you're consuming on a daily basis to make, that, that make you weak. And um, yeah, on my one, I think uh, so. So it was a dairy. Uh, dairy was one. And um, I think eggs was another with you know, eggs. Being, uh-huh. and, and so I was like, oh, that's that's really hit me. With, with a lot of things that I consume but fortunately um, with the dairy it, it didn't affect my uh, it didn't affect like the butter that I put I have butter coffee every morning bulletproof coffee oh, it really doesn't do affect that? the butter it's a different a different enzyme in the in the dairy um, for me but yeah this isn't about me stop asking whoa you're fat no, 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 it's it's so fat. Fat. Mine, mine they said uh, 
so I've, I've heard dairy is really bad for you. I stopped mm-hmm. dairy for years, like 10 years or something. I'm almost, almond milk was my go-to, right? Mm-hmm. I get my results back and you're like, they're like, you're allergic to almond milk. <laughs> I'm like, fantastic. <laughs> <That's how laughs> <you come there." laughs> yeah, it, it definitely, it definitely uh, it rarely delivers good news, these tests. But one, once you embrace it, it's quite good. And actually things that you are intolerant to, you can actually cycle out of and after 12 weeks begin to reintroduce them. And there's a chance that you're no longer intolerant to them if you do it in a oh, certain okay. way, which is quite cool. Not not the, the, the really serious ones, but some of the, the medium ones that like my wife um, was intolerant to cashews and she was able to cycle those back in. Um, how do you get yourself into a state of flow? I have to shut everything down, right? So no clock, no time, no messages, no anything. Um, and just dive in. And you know, sometimes it doesn't work. <laughs> like sometimes you want to get into flow and it's just, you know, just not going to happen. Um, and I think for us entrepreneurs, it's really important to be like, you know, it's just today's just nothing's going to happen today. Let me go binge or do something because it's not happening. Yeah. Um, usually if I start editing videos or writing stuff or creating graphics, I'm like, I'm in the zone. And if I can take that and continue to the other task, um, that works. Nice. What habit or opinion do you have that other people tend to disagree with? engagement (laughs) most people feel like you know all they need to do is go live right i turn on the camera i just talk at the camera and that's enough um i really think that we are getting into a world where so much out there is fake right have you seen that software with joe rogan where it actually sounds like him but it's not him Uh, yeah um i I forget the name of it but i think um was it buzzfeed did a documentary on it or something where you can they faked obama and trump both of them and saying things that they didn't say uh with the software yeah scary right and now you can take an image and create a video from an image like like take someone's picture and it's as if he's talking on video so we're going to get to a point where it's like you don't know what's real anymore and there's just not going to be any trust. And the only person you're going to trust is going to be your friends that you actually know in real time. Or if you're talking to someone face to face and you're like, OK, I know you're not bullshitting me. Mm. Um, so I feel like, you know, we're going to move. And now you can even fake live videos. We do that. Um, Oprah does that. You can take a pre-recorded video and stream it live. So it's not really live. It's still pre-recorded. Mm. So we're getting into this mushy area like the internet just when the internet started everybody was faking webinar attendees remember those like it's a pre-recorded webinar and like look at all the conversations happening fake everything fake right Mm. um now we kind of learned that it's all fake so people stopped doing this with webinars but now we do it with live uh we manipulate photos text you can look like you know you're awesome on text the only thing that you cannot fake is these real-time conversations and I feel like if you're not focusing right now on building those real-time conversation and building your audience, once we get to this tipping point where AI and good news and all that stuff, like you can't tell what's real anymore, you're going to be like, fudge, how do I make people trust me now? Mm. Right? And so I think we were like at this very interesting point in time where like, no, you have to engage with people face to face or you're going to be too late. Um, and most people are like, ah, I want to automate everything. How can I just automate, you know? Yeah. Let AI figure it out. Let them send messages and emails. I'm like, okay, it works now. <laughs> <laughs> Write it while it lasts because it's not going to last for long. Um, and so what, what tips um, uh, for being more engaging um, do you have? Talk to people. Everybody is still kind of like terrified of the camera. Right. But and you don't need like fancy technology. I mean, you can do that. Just grab your phone, go on Facebook Live or go on Instagram and let other people come in and talk to you. Mm -hmm. Two things will happen. One, you're not going to be so self-conscious because you're looking at a motionless camera going like, is my hair okay? Is my stuff fine? Right. Um, You'll be more interested in the other person and you'll become the expert simply by other people seeing you helping other people. So just have conversations online all the time. Um, if you want to systematize it, then we can help you, but you can do this on your own. Just go find people who have your issues and talk to them (laughs) in real time, face to face, really help them and then share that. I mean, that's the easiest way to get to build your audience. So you really need just a few things, right? You need a landing page where you can grab people's information, email, contact for somehow that you can follow up with them, some solution that they need. 
And if you don't, don't know what the solution is, go to all those Facebook groups, LinkedIn groups, forums, blogs, just see what people put in the comments, where they get stuck. Um, and then you'll find out exactly what they need from you and start small, you know, help five people, help 10 people, help, you know, 15 people, and it will be held on itself. Uh, but be the person that actually is there for real and not like, oh, I'm on a podium and you can't talk to me unless you go through these 10 people and maybe I'll have time for you. Because now you can do that, but down the road, other people will come in and be like, hey, I'll talk to you whenever you want. So <laughs> they'll grab yeah. your audience. Nice. Um, and so and so when you say jump onto Instagram and help people, are you talking about your own followers? Or are you talking about jumping into um, uh, existing conversations that you didn't necessarily start on Instagram somehow and, and, uh, and answering? You can do both, right? So you can find other people's comments. Uh, on other, So say your audience, like me and Gary Vee, for example, we're talking about very, very similar things. So if I want to find people that I relate to, I'll just have to go to his comments and interact with the people who are commenting on his stuff because Gary doesn't respond. I'll respond, <laughs> right? And then they'll come to my profile and be like, wow, she's talking about similar things. She's kind of bright. Let's talk to her. Um, that's the easiest way and legal way to increase your engagement and steal other people's audiences, right? So if the gurus are too busy to interact, you be the one interacting. Um, on and in. then once, <laughs> right? And now you're talking in chat, in comments, and let's say you, uh, you realize a lot of people are asking the same question. Jump on live, invite them in. Now it's your profile, it's your live. And now you're talking to other people audiences who are now your audience. <laughs> powerful, powerful stuff. Um, I, want, I really want to delve into like the how you manage the different groups of people that you've answered in, in the groups, but um, uh, maybe we haven't got t quite time for that, or maybe we're stepping on one of your paid services. So we'll, we'll move okay. on instead. <laughs> um, if you um, if you ran a school, but you only had uh, sorry, but you could only teach one non traditional lesson, um, what would that be? Same one engagement. I'm engagement. very good at that. Engagement. You, you should probably yeah. have a business around engagement or something. Maybe, right? Might be a good it's idea. Just an idea. Just an idea. <laughs> I know. I th you know, I think so many of us are so, like, we're normal in real life, right? Like, we know how to interact. You go to someone's party, you're invited, and you know how to act as a guest. But the minute you put it online or the minute you have an offer, we forget everything, and now we become this, like, piranha, right? Piranha? <laughs> Where are we piranha. Like, Where am I stuck? Piranha. Yeah. Buy my stuff, buy my stuff, buy my stuff, buy my stuff, buy my stuff. Um, I wanted to create a shirt that says, <laughs> um, fuck it, buy my shit, shit. <laughs> What's holding you back? What's holding you back? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I should put my potty mouth out there like that. <laughs> <laughs> People reading your top saying. Yeah. yeah, I'm like, they still think I'm a nice girl. So maybe. <laughs> <laughs> what book had the biggest impact on your life? Um, or books? If you like. oh. Or podcasts or video channels. How do you consume your content typically at the moment when you, how you learn? No, there is a good book. I can't forget the name. Uh, it's not the Celestine Prophecy. It is, um, do you know Jonathan Livingston Siegel? Definitely rings a bell. Book? Definitely rings a bell. There's a little story at the beginning of it. Um, and there's the same author. He wrote, uh, he wrote a fantastic book about a conversation with a messiah, which is uh, really great because it's good. But the one in Jonathan Livingstone Seagull, uh, it's a story about like uh, little creatures in, uh, in a river and the stream is trying to pull them and they're all hanging on to the rocks. And that's their way of life. It's like, just don't get pulled by the stream. And one of them starts thinking like, hey, what happens if I let go? And everybody is like, you're crazy. The stream is going to crash you and burn you and you'll like, be smashed and all that stuff. He's like, yeah, but is this an existence? Like, you know, like, is this what we're supposed to do? Just hold on for dear life? And they're like, yeah, because you'll die. And he goes <laughs> like, ah, I'll try it. And so he <laughs> let go, right? And the stream smashes him in all places. But then it lifts him up. And now all of them are just looking up going like, who's that? genius like how did he do that and he was like just let go and they're like no so it's kind of like the same thing of our life right we're like mm. every, like we have the gurus where they're like just turn on live no they'll see me on camera you know like we have all these amazing people in our life that are just that are like let go it will be okay no um so i like that story a lot 
And so is that, um, so I've just looked on, um, on Amazon. Uh, is it Jonathan Livingstone Seagull, a story? Uh, it's like a blue, yeah. blue cover and nice. Yes. And, this, and, and that a- same, hold on. I, I, give me a second. I have to show okay. you. Okay. <laughs> so temporarily we have no video, um, whilst, um, if that comes back with something quite impressive, uh, to show us. So I'm, I'm excited about that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I know you're editing, so it's fine. Um, so two of them. Illusions. Do you know okay. that one? Nope. I love this learning one is new a books. Quick read. Amazing. Who's that by? Illusions by? Richard Bach. Richard Bach, okay. That's the same guy who wrote Jonathan Livingstone. Yep. And then this one is awesome. Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. I've heard about that one. Yes. This one we uh, in my honors club at, uh, at university. We spent an entire semester talking about this book. Uh, it's fantastic. And you still love it, despite that. <laughs> despite that, right? It's, <laughs> it's, it's a true story of a guy who got really, really obsessed with the notion of quality. Like, why are things, some things are have quality in them, and some things, you know, they're mass-produced, they're not quality. Mm. And it, he was so obsessed, it drove him crazy, like literally into the lunatic house. Wow. Um, and then he came out, and he's having a road trip with his son on a motorcycle. Um, and he's kind of like going back to like craziness. Anyway, it's um, ideas and philosophy and stuff like that. But it's very applicable to everything we're doing today. Absolutely. So you might like it. Oh, I love it. Yeah, I've, I've written it right down. I, I, and I love it when um, we get we get um, out of the out of the the normal um, book recommendations on this show. So those those definitely tick that <laughs> box. Um, this is this is gonna be a good question. I feel. Um, have you got any advice for your previous boss? Don't fire me. <laughs> like, don't fire me, fool. Um, yeah, I mean, if he so, it would have been better for him and sucky for me because I would probably never be an entrepreneur. I would be building his business. Um, I think one of my the biggest reasons why he fired me is because I would not just do what he says. I would be like, yeah, but can we do it this way? And like, you know. I'd argue. So one of so, the guys. So how would you expand that to like advice for bosses in general? Like take that thought and, and, and turn it into an advice for just like bosses generally to make bosses better bosses. Um, well, I, if you value uh, thinking people in your organization, then let them thrive. If you just want people to push buttons, get a machine it's cheaper <laughs> <laughs> and so how would you recommend bosses um let their their best thinkers thrive so i will let them make mistakes uh so with my own employees for example they come up to me with ideas they're like hey i think we should do blah blah, blah. what do you think about blah blah and if it's not something very costly that i don't think you know uh will cost us in time or resources or in reputation i'm like sure mm. go with it and then they learn on the job, right? A, they feel appreciated. They feel like, wow, this is mine. And it's crazy. Like my employees, uh, one of our software stopped working and um, we wanted to share posts twice a day, twice, three times a day. And one of my girls, she's in Europe. She woke up at like four in the morning to post a post. And she only told me about it a week later. And I'm like, girl, why are you waking up at four in the morning? It's not that important. Your sleep is more important, right? Like... But that's the type of dedication you want from people. And the only way to get that type of dedication is if you make them feel like they, you give them ownership on their pro, on their um, on their work and you don't criticize them for making any silly mistakes, right? You're like, okay, we learned together. So this didn't work. <laughs> Let's try it that way. Um, a lot of people like to uh, figure out systems and you just follow the system. I let them develop the system. I'm like, okay, you develop the system and now you run your system. And if it gets our results, then fantastic. Maybe Brilliant. you know something I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Well, that, that's, the, the, that's the situation that you should want to be in, right? Where, where your, your team is actually, you know, making you redundant, like, you know, because, because your team's so brilliant. Yes, I actually started giving it to uh, some of my team. Is, I'm like, you develop the system and you teach that girl and that girl, if she can follow this, she'll teach me. And now everybody's teaching and everybody's figuring out how everything works. And I can go on vacation, right? Isn't that the <laughs> ideal? <laughs> Laptop lifestyle, yes. Um, where do you go or what do you do to get inspired? Don't That's say a- hummus. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that movie, uh, something with the Zoan 
where he was putting, don't mess with the Zohan. He's putting hummus in everything. Yeah. <laughs> Watching Adam Sandler. Yeah, 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 that's right. <laughs> How do I get inspired? Um, showers, I think, is the best way. Um, so I work out, I go to Kav Maga every day. So some people, you know, take random showers. Uh, but I shower every day and, you know, you just take your time and your mind flows. Um, and I think every time we can be without our cell phones <laughs> is a good time to let you know let other things come in rather than consume so much i like it so what does the you so say you mentioned um Karl Magar and showers what does the first sort of um 30 minutes to two hours of your day look like and like what, what does that oh that'll like? be so boring i work really? from home yeah okay. i work from home and i wake up i make my uh little oatmeal i come team meeting and then i get straight to work Kav Maga happens at the end of the day okay. um yeah, so every day around 6 p.m. or something like that. Um, it's interesting. I'm level two, and so now we got into the sparring part. And it's amazing when you think like, whoa, you know, I've been there for two years. I'm level two. I got this shit, right? And then you go against someone who's like level three, level four, <laughs> and you get your ass kicked. <laughs> You're like, I don't know, shit. But it's really a fantastic metaphor to what we're trying to do here, right? Like you might be working on your business for so long uh, that you feel like you should be so much further away. And it can get really, really frustrating just before things click in. Um, and it's that patient and that refinement of, you know, your moves and your strategy and the thing that you're working on. It's like there's one moment where it clicks. And so many of us quit before that clicking moment because... It just feels like you're grinding and grinding and grinding, right? It's the same punch a billion times until you get it right. Um, but it's it's a wonderful practice and it's mm. a great way to kind of like disassociate, right, from what's going on. And someone was saying, right, it took us a year, right? Humans take about a year to walk, right? Mm. Like, yeah. So what if a baby goes like, you know what, fuck it. I've been trying for <laughs> nine months. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, it's, it's a crazy thing. So we've just gone through this. My, my son um, is 17 months old and um, we've just gone through this. And it seems like the process to becoming an expert walker is falling on your face a lot. Like, right. that, like it's, it's literally not walking, right? Like it's it's the yeah. it's like do, 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 oh boom. okay. So I've learned that I shouldn't do this sort of half hop <laughs> sideward step as I'm trying to walk, or you know. And uh, now he like runs everywhere. So now he's doing the same process but running. And so now when he falls on his face, it's even harder. Yeah. Um, and as parents, you're just like oh shit, that looked painful. And you've just got to smile and uh, you know embrace yeah, it and, and just let him decide whether it was too much that time or. Um, um, but uh, it could be worse. A friend of mine, um, his his child started to walk when they were on holiday in Spain, and all the floors um, where they were were made of marble. So in terms of like hard surfaces to fall on, yeah. it was it was up there. But yeah, it, it, you know, it's a great metaphor um, uh, for it. And a lot of people do give up just before um, that. You know, that that final. Um, stage where they get the um the thing they build a lot of half finished bridges or, or so on so many right and so it's like if you just pick one thing or just one thing and just get into that for just a little while right um or figure out where like i figured my quitting my success comes five minutes after i decide to give up <laughs> so now i know when i feel like giving up i'm like just wait wait five minutes it's happening <laughs> right <laughs> but if you can kind of figure that one for yourself like where where is my break point and then when it's my success point and just know your thing a little bit better then you might stick with it and also just find friends for the journey because we all fall right mm. so the thing is like fall seven times get up eight right yeah. <laughs> that's it yeah. um so just find people to fall with and like parents to kind of be like it's okay brush your teeth you know we're fine mm. I love yeah that. If I gave you $5,000, how would you double it in 24 hours? Fudge. Um, <laughs> you keep saying potty question. mouth, but you also keep saying fudge, so... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, fudge. <laughs> oh, you'll have to bleep that. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, you know, I, how, many, how many people actually give you a good answer for that one? I've had some good answers. I've had some yeah. good answers, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how would I double it in uh, fair? So how do I make 10K in 24 hours? I feel like marketing is probably the fastest way yeah. to do that. Uh, yeah. Because you don't have to create anything. Um, so I would go live <laughs> a yeah. lot 
um, and just talk about this amazing thing that I just found and uh, put some money behind those lives so it increases the reach a little bit more. And uh, that's it. I just need to find a nice product that will make that transition, that conversion worth it. And so actually, let's just delve into that for a second. So you put, you're putting money behind live. So you're actually promoting the live as it's live? Uh, no, even though that uh, might be a good idea. But um, I'm happy to share with you some screenshots if you want. I don't know if people can see it. Um, but because Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube really want to become those media places, right? And TV is kind of losing and we're all trying to move into the internet they their algorithm just pushing everything so just by going live you get more reach and visibility than you would with even paid ads um so you can just leverage the free algorithms for as much as you want and then figure out what people are looking at the most and then put some money behind that um nice. So, so, yeah. um, so putting the, the, the paid ads behind a live that was a previous live that's now finished, but it was your most popular live. So boosting right. that, um, and whatever platform got it. Yeah. What's the best advice ever given to you? That was given to me. Mm-hmm. Best advice that was given to me. Um, I think talk about pain points. I'm not very good at that, but like drive in the pain, um, yeah, that's probably in terms of business. In terms of life, um, always try something twice because okay. <laughs> the first time you do it, you kind of still don't really know how you feel. It's like the first feeling, but the second time you'll know whether you like it or not. So always give it two tries. That's that's great advice. In fact, my, my parents, um, when I was growing up, they, it, it was once for them. They would say, oh, just try it once, just try it once because I think they must have figured out that normally I liked it or whatever, but... Um, but then, yeah, I think then certain things like playing the violin, which I hated from the very get go, they were like, Oh, just try it twice or just for one term. <laughs> uh, but, <laughs> but yeah, try it twice because it, it gives you a little chance to, to sort of process the first experience. And certainly, uh, I don't know if you've ever done flotation tanks with, um, Epsom salts. I haven't, have you? Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Many a time. Crazy. Well, there's really? a big, there's a big difference between the first and the second time. So for, for yourself and for anybody listening, um, uh, flotation tanks where, where you're, you're literally laying in water, which is at body temperature. Um, it's filled with Epsom salts. Not that you can see it, but it means that you're very buoyant and you're actually floating on the surface. Well, the first time you go, like if you've only gone once, don't be discouraged because um, the first time you go, you're learning how to float. And so your muscles are figuring that out. If you've got any cuts, the salt it gets in there and it stings. And so next time you'll be prepared and you'll cover it with Vaseline or something, petroleum jelly and, and, and that. Um, the first time you're more almost certainly at some point going to accidentally touch your face or rub your forehead and then now salt water's going in your eyes and so it can be a little bit traumatic the first time if you haven't really prepared and done loads of research online but the second time you go in and you've got the muscle memory you're floating you know to cover up all of your cuts you know what to expect you know the length of time you can relax a little bit more and and so absolutely i, I would apply that rule to, to flotation tanks um any day um but Do you great experience get definitely recommend it uh, actually, the yeah. one near us is a room. Um, I have done the, the there's ones which are more like sort of big eggs, and there's ones which are more like yeah. rooms. Um, uh, I don't get claustrophobic. Um, uh, it's just it's just a great experience because you you're sort of meditating the whole time, but you're floating there. It's supposed to simulate kind of like being in the womb, um, but it just unlocks thoughts and processes and stuff. So I always have a notebook as well. So when I come out, I'm like noting noting down things that have come to me that shouldn't have done because you're meditating, but they do. So that's what it, that's what it is. Anyway, <laughs> this isn't about me again. So what <laughs> what silly thing should people do more of? What silly things should people do more of? Yeah. Um, I think we should play more. Do you know that sentence of uh, you don't stop playing because you grow old? You grow old because you stop playing? Nice. I like that. So, yeah, there's a movie. It's called Tag. Have you watched it? No. Nope. Uh, no. So it's, it's a true story about a bunch of friends who decided who were playing tag as kids. Five of them, I think. And they decided like every year. They're just going to play tag and one of them is going to be the guy like, you know, that needs to tag other people. So he's not the person. And it's it, a real story. And it kept them playing together because you don't know when someone's going to pop up to you, your job and tag you. Mm. Uh, it's really, really cool. Um, but I think that's, you know, that's one of our challenges, especially as entrepreneurs. We're like so into the business and we forget, why did I start the business in the first place? Mm. Right. Like, so myself, for example, it's summer right now. And um and 
I was at my son's birth, like one of his friend's birthday party. And so you're with the other moms. You have nothing in common because the only thing you have is a kid that goes to the same school. And two of them are talking about road trips that they're going to take. And I'm like, why am I not doing that? I love road trips. We went on a road trip for 10 days last summer. Why don't we do it now? Because I'm in startup mode, right? And I have to do all these things and I have to take (laughs) care of the team. and And I'm like, no, but we started the business so we can have that freedom. Um, so I think sometimes we get so stuck in the to-do list that we forget the fun stuff, right? So when you have kids, especially, it's much easier because now you have to entertain them. Uh, and here's a really tip, a good tip. I'm, I'm going to find it and I'm going to send it to you. There's a text message. It called, uh, it's called Do Dads, and it's for fathers. Mm-hmm. And even though I'm a mom, I get that. <laughs> but it's for fathers, and they text you every day some activity to do with your kid. And it's stuff like work on a signature, change the oil, uh, like, you know, go fly a kite, other stuff that kind of like, oh, yeah, if I did that today would not be all about work. Yeah. Um, so I think, you know, we we forget to play because we're like, OK, now I'm this serious business person who's a startup and, I'm in a, you know, I'm in a suit and people have an opinion of me. I need to to look a certain way. And if we just eh, and remember that you do that so you can play more then play and then everything else will happen. So you guys are going to see me on a road trip very soon. <laughs> nice. I really like that. And actually, um, we had a, we had a, a previous guest, uh, guest Matt, who um, he said, yeah, actually, not only play more, but actually the things that you played with as a child, there's a good chance you'll still enjoy playing with, the, uh, enjoy playing with them now. And so, yeah, just do more of that. And, um, and so, and so, and, and, and to that, he sort of then went into a, into a thing where he said, and that's why I'm surrounded by comic book stuff. And it makes me happy. And I was like, that is amazing. <laughs> um, would you, would you rather fight one horse sized duck or a hundred duck sized horses? One, cause hopefully my Krav Maga will, <laughs> will be enough to kind of like, you know, stop that one horse, then a bunch of little <laughs> yeah, some of the big beak and the big and the big um the big wings and stuff that'll be no mess uh it'd be no match for for your level two craft i hope so right because all you need to do is like hit them here right mm-hmm. like pretty good yeah hopefully that'll stop them if not okay. i think they have balls right <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I guess i didn't specify the gender <laughs> of the duck in the question but uh i'm not sure actually i mean maybe someone can write in and let us know about uh duck genitalia that'd be that'd be interesting and then i can actually give options of the, of the question how would you <laughs> how would you convince someone to do something good that they didn't want to do that's the million dollar question for any parent because if i could do that i'll have the most behaved the best behaved kid um <laughs> I think, you know, it always comes down to what's in it for me, right? Um, And a lot of time, so this might be a good one. A lot of time people think that um, it has to be money. It has to be some kind of a tangible um, reward. But what I found is that, and that's how we get into other people's databases. A lot of, a lot of people are still want to feel a lot of people still want to feel significant. A lot of people still have this ego and they want to look good. Um, and if you just compliment someone about something that they haven't done yet, or you present to them an image of them that you see that is like more than they see themselves, they'll usually step up to that image. So if you're talking to someone and you're like, wow, you are so helpful. You've been helping me in so many ways. And if I had something that I really needed help with, I'm sure you would you know, I can turn to you. Of course you can turn to me. Really? Because listen, <laughs> it's funny that you mentioned that. <laughs> but I think complimenting other people is uh, is a great way a, to make good friends. It's nice because you think about the positive all the time. And in terms of business, like imagine someone came to your own social profiles or your blogs or your videos and said something nice about you. Mm. What's the first thing that you're going to do? You're going to be like, hey, who's that? person who thinks so highly of me and then you're going to go check them out and now what have you done you got someone else checking all your stuff seeing whether it's a good value right and maybe you build a relationship so being nice and complimenting to other people without an ulterior uh, ulterior motives yeah <laughs> most, most of the time works yeah like that. and then finally final question what makes you the happiest what makes me the happiest man landing that perfect punch <laughs> really like the, the perfect that sound of the jaw here. breaking is that is, is that, <laughs> that real sweet sound <laughs> no actually i'm happy when i'm teaching when i'm on yeah. stage when i'm teaching when i'm talking when i'm sharing uh when i'm playing i love that and why do you I'm think that extra- is 
Why? Mm. Oh, I love the energy exchange. I love, you know, like, um, I love the brainstorming. I love to be like, ooh, that's a great idea. Um, when I was younger in Israel, there's not, there's not a real good translation for this word, but it's kind of like a person who comes up with ideas. So I guess it's an advisor, <laughs> right, yeah. or a consultant. Um, but that was my dream to like, what, what do you want to be when you grow up? I want to mm. be an advisor. Why? Give me your advice. Pay me money. You do nothing, right? You just <laughs> share ideas. <laughs> yeah. good, good ideas is important. Yeah. Good ideas, right? <laughs> uh, but it's so much fun because you can see someone taking your ideas and actually implementing them and it makes an impact and a difference and you see how that success ripples. Um, it, for me, it's, it's a lot of joy. So um, that's why I don't like talking to my sister because she's asking for advice and never implements. <laughs> so <laughs> don't. <laughs> Fantastic. And so, um, so obviously we've got, we've got a bunch of people um, listening and watching. Um, do you have any asks or requests for the audience um, tuned in uh, today? Uh, no, I have a give. Uh, yeah. If you guys actually want to... Uh, to talk to world-class experts in real time, hop on in to omthatgeek.com. Uh, it's completely free. You can come in, tune in, ask any questions, get advice. Um, and if we can help you with anything, let us know. That's it. Fantastic. So that's imthatgeek.com. Yes. Love that. Um, well, in fact, you've been amazing. I've actually laughed quite a lot on this. Um, uh, it, it's it's truly uh, the, the energy is truly coming through um, from your cloudy Austin um, <laughs> studio straight um, into into the airwaves and, and through here. I, that's I butchered that a little bit, but you get what I'm trying to say here. It's been, <laughs> yes, it's been a you. really really positive experience. I'm t truly grateful uh, for your time. Thank you so much for joining us today. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Great questions, by the way. We try. Yeah, you do it. <laughs>